Hello and welcome along to the workshop where today we're having a look at the Westerrand impulse driven clock. There it is. Um, right, let's have a good look at it on the bench and uh, see what makes it tick, literally. Okay, uh, here's the clock itself. As you can see, it looks very much like a conventional um, electric or mechanical clock. Uh, it's made by Westerstrand and the logo's sadly hidden by the hour hand at the moment. We shan't worry about that. Um, and what it is, it's an impulse clock. It's the sort of thing you used to get in schools, offices and factories where the clock contains no timekeeping apparatus at all. It's all done uh, by a remote clock somewhere else in the building. And all the clocks are synchronised together. You may also have heard the name synchronome was um, what I had fitted to my, my, my uh, school when I was a kid. Um, it also rang the bells for changing of lessons. I wonder if they still do that. But there it is. Um, so what... The clocks have is uh, something that looks very much like a clock mechanism on the back um, except for like I say it has no timekeeping in it whatsoever um, how it's actuated is uh, you put 24 volts pulse on here on the hand moves a bit you turn it uh, one minute and then you put the next pulse is reverse polarity pulse it again it moves a minute on um, I'm just going to demonstrate that now um, all right so I've got my 24 volts power supply here so if we put uh, positive on the left there and negative on the right um, and what I shall do is pulse the pulse the power supply so let me just connect that up so if I pulse the supply as you can see it moves on reverse the polarity pulse the supply again there it goes another minute and that's how it would operate the master clock would send these pulses to all the clocks in in the building and they'd all remain in sync of course if you get a fault it makes it a little more difficult especially if one's clock ran out of uh, broke and all the others would still be running um, the synchronome system i believe was wired in series so that was the clocks all wired in a chain um, the wester strand system um, appears to uh, have had parallel connected clocks so um, Obviously, if one failed, they wouldn't all stop. Right, so we needed a device to drive this. So let me just rest that up there. So what we've come up with is, uh, oh, where are we? There we are. Is, let's uh, see if I can get a zoom in. Are you going to focus? No. No. No, it's not going to focus. Never mind. But anyway, we've developed this little PCB. It's got an 80 mega uh, 3 to 8 uh, microcontroller on there, uh, two push buttons to control the setting, initial setting of the clock, and I'll come back to that in a minute. A um, bunch of transistors down here, uh, which form an H bridge, which uh, supplies the 24 volts to the coil of the clock and reverses it as appropriate under the control of the microprocessor. It's also got a uh, 433 megahertz radio receiver here, um, because if you've followed my channel, you'll know that uh, we built a master clock, um, which at least once a day um, transmits um, a clock signal uh, that's locked to GPS to all the other remote clocks um, in the building and that's just so you know we never have to set them. Also in here is a British summertime detector so in the event of uh, it being uh, alleged summer in the UK which is very nice today it will um, it'll compensate and add the hour on for daylight saving time as required. Right let's uh, let's run it all up and uh, show you what uh, how this all works. OK, so we've got our clock connected back up to the, the circuit we've built. Details about the circuit, of course, are on the website at uh, andydawes.blogspot.com. So first thing we need to do is the control circuitry has no idea what is being displayed on the clock face. There is no feedback whatsoever to tell the microprocessor what the time is. So I looked at two ways of doing this. I could either um, put a, a selector mechanism, maybe display on the circuit board and you literally enter in the time you've got on the display, in which case, what are we, 10.42? Uh, or then I thought, well, more simple idea is perhaps if we make it so the clock starts at 12 o'clock and then when the microprocessor starts the clock, it knows it's at 12 o'clock, which is what I've done. So I've got two buttons on here. One will advance the clock an hour there it goes. There it 
there and one which advances it minutes so one push gives you one minute you can hold that down nicely and it'll just tick around so there we go 12 o'clock so now as soon as the signal is received from the GPS clock itself um, it'll set the correct time and there it goes I just press the synchronization button on the clock to transmit and the signal has beamed across the workshop into this blue piece of wire which is actually the aerial for the 433 megahertz receiver and there it is setting the time we may have to wait a while because it's uh, half past six we'll come back there it is and it is indeed 6.35 brilliant must be time for tea the other thing the clock will do is uh, as long as it has a continuous 24 volt power supply and doesn't go off in which case we'd have to reset it um, as and when uh, daylight saving time British summer time goes in and out uh, the clock will adjust itself and of course it can't go backwards so um, when the hour falls back it will have to go around 11 hours and then when it moves forward in the spring it'll just have to rotate an hour but uh, that's just how it works and it's funny I remember the clocks doing that um, at school um, when they needed setting somebody would come along and they would all ch -ch 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 all together but there we go right details of course on the website at um, www.andydoz.blogspot.com um, and that's it thanks for watching and I'll see you soon Thank <laughs> you.